welcome back to my channel where all about love, positivity, being a girl boss, and everything in that vicinity. In today's video, I'm doing a Q&A because what else can I do when I'm in quarantine? What we're gonna be doing is, I asked you guys to ask me some questions and I said try not to make them basic. Some of you guys still did make them basic, but we're gonna do these videos anyway, okay? And I'm gonna try to shout out everybody who asked me questions. Some of you guys, you may not have said it. I said, you know, leave your, I said, you know, I'll shout you out, but some of you guys asked me questions and then didn't tell me anything to shout out. So I was like, okay, clearly you don't wanna shout out. You just wanna support your girl and give me some questions. If you're new to this channel, then welcome back. Thank you for being here. Thank you for loving me as much as I love you. And yeah, let's get into the video first question already with the foolishness is will you marry me i know exactly who sent this it was not my significant other thank you for the offer but no i will not be marrying you the next question is from eccentric rebel who is my best friend and also a fellow youtuber so go subscribe to her channel eccentric rebel and her question is what are you gaining personally from being a blogger slash youtuber that actually is a really good question and i'm not 100 sure how to answer it i think that one thing i'm gaining is a lot of self-reflection and watching my own growth online has been actually very interesting to see the type of person i was when i started this channel and the type of person that i am now and also to when i do like story times and when i'm sharing information with you guys it's like i'm also reflecting on things that i've learned and so i think that personally being online and being an influencer has while the purpose was to inspire others has allowed me to grow in myself it's allowed me to work on my self-development more actively and i think that's one of the main things that i'm getting from this is that my self-development and my self-growth is a lot more intentional and it's a lot more active because now i'm not just doing it for myself i'm doing it to show you guys that it can be done and so for you guys too and so i guess having that bigger inspiration is making a bigger impact on my life so i think personally i'm gaining a lot of self-development and self-growth on this blogging and youtube journey from from dora dora's garden on Instagram and YouTube, the E in garden is a three. And she said, what were you doing before YouTube and what made you start your YouTube channel? I feel like in every Q&A, somebody asked me what made me start my YouTube channel and I actually think like 50,000 people asked me why I started my YouTube channel in this one too. So I'm not even gonna answer that question. So basically, you guys already know, I said it in the first video I ever uploaded and I said it in every Q&A and I've even said it in some other videos randomly why I started my channel. But what I was doing before my YouTube channel, for those of you that don't know, I was working either as a nanny or a day or at a daycare center full time and my goal at the time was to one day open my own daycare center and be the director of that daycare center so that was my goal and that was what I had intended on doing before I ever started a blog and before I ever started my YouTube channel those are my goals and those are the things that I was doing next is how do you really feel about what's going on in the world with the coronavirus are you scared or it's not a big deal this question is from Latet's world l-a-t-e-t -E apostrophe s world that's her youtube channel so go subscribe to her and yeah how do i feel about this coronavirus thing i don't think it's not a big deal i think it is a big deal but i'm also not scared i have you know i know not everybody has a faith not everybody you know i don't get religious on this channel but you guys do know that i do have a faith and i am a christian i do believe in god and so i really just feel like he's got me rather what there are a lot of different conspiracy theories and things being said there are a lot of um you know people talking about what the government is trying to do new world order people are talking about how many people are dying and you know i guess you know i'm following the the procedures so that i'm not adding to the problem and i also feel like one this is showing people's true colors this entire situation in my opinion has shown a lot of people's true colors a lot of people are actually trash they genuinely don't care about other human beings they genuinely don't care about their health or anyone else's health a lot of young people are so concerned with partying and saying oh it's not affecting me that they don't realize that their irresponsibility is killing people's grandparents is killing people's friends with asthma is killing people's parents killing people who have already had issues and so that um it's bothering me in that sense but in the other senses you know the fear 
I just feel like, you know, if you have a real solid relationship with God, then you, you're not scared right now. That's my personal opinion. Now, there are some people who may not feel the same way, but I am with God and I feel like God is going to protect me. And if God wants me to die or if the new world order is coming, whatever, then all I really can do is be like, God's got me and live my life the best that I can. I feel like in this time, I am forced to focus on my business and my channel. I cannot worry and stress myself out I do not look at the news and listen to everybody's foolishness every single day because to me that's not healthy and that will cause me to worry and have anxiety and unnecessary negative thoughts if the government out here doing trash stuff we all gonna find out eventually it ain't gonna be a secret forever if they trying to cause the new world order or if they're trying to you know inject things into us at some point we're gonna find out so why is why it's becoming like you know oh it's all a conspiracy I'm so scared like I I just I don't see any reason or any purpose and I'm just gonna chillax and not add to the problem now I'm not going to be say that it's not a big deal I'm not gonna say that I feel like it's as big a deal as some people are making it I feel like panicking is making things worse everybody getting scared and panicking and overreacting and trying to buy up everything that they can is not helping but I also feel like people are a little I also feel like you know it's you're either gonna get sick or you're not and all you can do is your best to take care of you and yours and that's pretty much how I am I'm very I guess at first like for the first couple of days I was getting anxiety but then you know God was like Ricky calm down you're you, you'll be okay and I was like I right, got I got I feel you um, I had a couple people ask me about how to get more engagement with my viewers and get more chance of them liking and subscribing and things like that and I had somebody else ask me you know how to get more subscribers how to grow I don't know why people thought that I would like I had 50,000 subscribers or something I don't know why anybody thought that I would know but I guess the best advice that I can give youtubers who are struggling to grow is to just shut up and be patient and I say this in the nicest way possible but I get really tired of people who think they're just gonna instantly get 1,000 subscribers and be like oh sub for sub please subscribe back be honest subscribe to me comment on this and then you sound so pathetic and pitiful let your work and your content speak and do its work for itself your tribe will come I would say engage with other YouTubers, go work with other YouTubers, but if people are not being honest, if they're not subscribing back to you or if they're subscribing to unsubscribe, okay, if they're subscribing to unsubscribe, then let them. That is what you're going to do. That's going to impact their future growth and success more than anything else. I'm not about to stress myself going back to make sure that somebody still subscribed to my channel and da 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 da. My tribe, the people who are for me, will F with me. I always try to keep my integrity. I always try to be honest, watch everybody's videos, and comment where I can if I have something to comment. Because sometimes I watch people's videos and I don't comment because I really don't have anything to say. I just, I watched it whatever and I don't like those generic comments good video I don't I try not to comment that so if that's all I have to say I just don't comment and so I would say engage as much as possible look in the keyword SEO research make sure that you're engaging with people who fit in your niche stop just trying to find other small youtubers and expect to get you know monetized only interacting with small youtubers instead of interacting with people who fit into your niche with people who are actually looking for the things that you have to offer because that is just as important if not more so important as being in the small youtuber community stop hassling people for youtube subscribers and stop sending people dms saying hey sub for sub stop doing that stop trying to do sub for sub because guess what you don't have an audience you have a bunch of sub for subbers that's what you have. You don't have people who give a crap about you, who would buy your merch, who is gonna wanna watch your videos, who any of that. They're just, you know, there to be there. I'm all for supporting other small YouTubers. Don't get it twisted. I love supporting other small YouTubers. I watch a lot of people's videos on a regular basis, but I also, when it comes to my own content, while I do swap watch hours, do all those things, you know, watch for watch and all those good things, I don't do sub for sub. And I also don't check up on whether or not people are being honest with me because at the end of the day I'm trying to support you and if you're not honestly supporting me then that karma will come back to you and I know for a fact that people who do stuff like that who are only doing sub for subs and being dishonest their channels never genuinely grow and they take and it takes them much longer to get monetized period they end up struggling they end up mad those are the people that are are online mad and confused because they're not getting enough attention subscribers or views or their views don't match their subscribers because you didn't grow right the first way and you you'll suffer for it later and youtube will pick up and youtube will pick up on it and regardless 
I'm worried about my tribe and the people that are here for me. Those of you that are watching right now, those of you that have made it to this point in the video even, those of you who comment on a regular basis, I see you and you are the people that I'm doing this for. I'm not doing this just to be like, oh my God, get more likes, get more views, da 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 da, -da. I don't check my analytics every day. That's pathetic and unhealthy. And I don't have time for that kind of stuff. I'm here for a purpose and that's what you need to be focusing on Why you're making your YouTube channel and your purpose. What is it that you're trying to offer people? Focus on that. Stop bugging so much about how many views and likes and subscribes you're getting. It's kind of pitiful. I would rather grow slow but have genuine subscribers than grow really quickly and have like a hundred thousand subscribers but only like 200 views. Like you know what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. I would say just engage and be authentic and have your own integrity and the right people will come to you. Next is from Davia Lawrence on Facebook. Um, she said, how do you feel about the TikTok trend of specifically white men having a black girl fetish? Um, that's an interesting question. I don't know. I don't really have a feeling. I know there are a lot of white guys that like black girls. I know this whole interracial thing is becoming like a real topic on TikTok. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't care. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I I I am a strong black black love person. Like I love black people, I love our culture, I love the melanin, but I'm also not one of those people that's like in your face, black power, black power, black power. Like I'm not one of those people who's constantly talking about oh why black girl women are not getting the love that we deserve. I acknowledge it, I recognize it, but also I I don't dwell on it the way a lot of black women do. And I don't say that like we're like anybody's wrong or you know we should just let it go or anything like that, but I also acknowledge that I just don't accept those. I don't accept those into my life or into my environment who do not treat me with those the respect that I deserve. The fact that there are a bunch of ignorant people out there who think that black women are less than the amazing phenomenal women that we are, that is a you problem and you just don't get to exp experience all of the awesome phenomenon phenomenal women that I am. And that's just how I feel about it. And white guys who like black women, all power to them. I think that, you know, that's great. I don't, I guess, I don't care. Like, I just don't care. Like, I know, like, sometimes white guys are a little weird about it. Like, oh my God, black girls. Like, like we're some delicacy. And, you know, some women are flattered by it. Some women are like, nah, fam, black love or whatever. I'm kind of like, whatever, because I'm in love with who I'm in love with. And so I'm really not concerned with any of you. But, um... I guess I've noticed the trend. I'm not going to sit here and say that I didn't notice. And my sister, my little sister, she's young and she's very impressionable. And the her being a young black woman trying to find the confidence in herself while having to see how much black women are not cared about, especially black women that are not mixed, black women that do not have thin or easy to manage hair, like dark skinned women, you know, certain type of women that are bashed in ways that aren't that other women aren't. She's struggling with that. And so she brings a lot of stuff to my attention. But I just I just don't I don't care. Next question is from the OC's family, o, the OC's journey from O S E I apostrophe S O S E I apostrophe S journey asks me says well I'm into interracial marriage so my question is simple what's your take on interracial marriage my take on interracial marriage even though I personally this is a personal you know my personal thing I'm more attracted to black men than I am to other races now am I close to other races no I've been in a relationship with a white man I've talked to men of Hispanic I've talked to Italian I've been in a relationship with an Italian man but I'm more attracted to black men and while I'm all for interracial marriage I feel like if it works for you if that's what you like if that's what makes you happy awesome I prefer black men because one I'm attracted to them and I'm more attracted to them and two I feel like if I have a son I really want someone to be able to properly explain my black son what it's like to be a black man in America. And I feel like no matter how hard you try, a white man is not gonna be able to do that in an honest and relatable way because there's gonna be certain things that they just don't understand. 
because they, they're not a black man in America. And a black man in America has it really hard and I want an honest representation and an honest conversation about what that's like. Now if I end up falling in love with a white man, I'm in love with a black man right now, my future husband, he's black, so that's not really an issue. But if I were to have fallen in love with a white man, then those would be the type of things that I would depend on from my father or from other black men in my life because I will try to make sure that he does understand that even if you're mixed, you're still a black man and that's how a lot of these white cops are going to view you. A black man, mixed or not, you're black, you're tainted in their eyes. So I am going to want that to be an understanding and that's one of the main reasons I used to always say I, I would rather marry a black man but also the heart loves what the heart loves and I feel like interracial... I feel I feel like love in itself is beautiful. I feel like people who love each other, people who who have a real genuine healthy love that isn't about what culture they come from, it's about who they are, that's beautiful to me. And so I don't care if you want to marry somebody outside of your race. I don't think it's a big deal. I think that people make it a big deal and I get it, I get why, you know, so many people, you know, have their their indifference about it or the issues about it but personally i just i think that you should love whoever you want to love and anybody you don't like it screw them and next question is what are your goals for your youtube channel so i want to get to 100k on youtube that is my goal i want youtube to be one of my big parts of my income it's not really my main focus because my blog is really my main focus but I do want to get to 100k eventually on YouTube. Next is from Shamora Adams, you guys, and if you guys know me, then you guys know I love Shamora Adams. And his question is, what is the happiest moment in your life so far? I really don't know if I can say that there's a happiest moment of my life so far. I think maybe the happiest moment of my life so far... I really don't know. I can't tell you. I don't... There's not... I get happy a lot and there are a lot of amazing things that have happened to me so I don't think I can just pinpoint one moment when I was just so ridiculously happy that it was a pivotal moment in my life and I've never been happier than that moment right there like I don't think that I have anything like that if you can time travel what's one thing you would change I would never change anything I've been asked a question like this before and I really actually am very happy with where my life is now and where my life is going and I wouldn't be here where my life is now if anything was different from my past so I wouldn't change a single solitary thing next questions is from Kosha Kosh how many subscribers were you at when you truly believed YouTube is worth it? I believed YouTube was worth it when I hit 50 subscribers. I think I immediately, I knew YouTube was for me before I started YouTube. So I genuinely, that there, I think I was like really low in the subscriber poll, didn't have any views. I got like 20 views on videos and those were still like, to me, I felt like YouTube was everything. I loved it so much, not more than my blog, but like more than anything else other than my blog that I was doing. It surpassed my business. It surpassed, you know, any of my other side hustles and things that I do. Like it, it just surpassed everything because I immediately knew it was for me. My creativity, how creative I was allowed to be on my YouTube. YouTube channel changed the game for me the next question is from miss exclusive for whose channel I love shout out to her and her question is what's your favorite social media platform and why my favorite is Twitter you guys should know this my favorite is Twitter because that's where all the ratchets hang out and I can say as much as I want whenever I want without it being too much so I love me some Twitter. Y'all know I love Twitter. I just love the creative freedom on Twitter. Instagram is a little bit more because mm, there's community guidelines and things. On Twitter, I can be just as ratchet and ridiculous as I want to. Um, another question from Miss Exclusive 4 is, what is one thing that you wish you could change presently? Right now, I just wish this coronavirus thing was kind of over. Not because I necessarily want to go out, but because I want everybody to calm down. I feel like my biggest bother is how trash a lot of people are being and how much a lot of people are afraid and panicky and that makes me feel some type of way and so I really wanted to go away so that everybody can be happy and feel good again about you know you know other than the people that are just Debbie Downers anyway but those of us who have anxiety and who are stressed out at home like I just really wish this could pass for the sake of those people top memorable moment in your life top memorable moment in my life I want to say that it is the moment, I want to say it's the moment I decided to start a blog. 
Like it's the moment I decided to be an influencer. That is the most memorable moment in my life because I realized what I wanted to do with my life for the first time in my life. Like I always thought I knew, but there's a different feeling when you just know what your purpose is. And when that realization comes to you, it's a different feeling. And that's like probably the most memorable moment of my life. Cause I wouldn't say it was like the happiest moment. It was just like, I will never be able to forget that moment. What's the shallowest thing you've ever done? I had a bad sexual experience with a guy one time and then ghosted him because he was little and the sexual experience was not good. I think that's the shallowest thing I've ever done. What's your favorite perfume? I don't really have a favorite perfume. I think I just, you know, I like what I like, you know. Main goal to accomplish in the year of 2020 from Aiko Lei. And um, my main goal to accomplish between the, tw the year of 2020 is to be working from home full time before the end of the year and be making income from all of my side hustles. Even if it's not a large amount of income, I want to be able to work from home full time and that sustain my living and my lifestyle because for y'all that don't know, I do have a certain lifestyle that I like to maintain. And second, for me to be making some amount of income from every at home venture that I have so that includes YouTube blogging patreon which I now have so if you guys like patreon if you guys want to see me do reactions to animes or anything like that that will be in the description box below um patreon um anything really I want I want it on um, my merch that I plan on selling before the end of the year everything I want to be making income from my book all of it so yeah pet peeves my biggest a pet peeve my well I don't say my biggest peeve but some of the peeves I have is people who lie I don't like lying that's like my biggest pet peeve that's the number one way to get on my bad list is to lie to me um another pet peeve is people who pretend like they're like guys I was just talking about this on Twitter last night when people are cheating or just a trash person in 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 general and they tweet or be on social media all the time talking about being faithful in a relationship and being a good person like it's just like but you're trash and that's like a really big pet peeve of mine um another pet peeve is um disrespectful people like people who are just disrespectful for no reason that's just like so unnecessary and uncalled for it's very annoying for me the next question is, if you could have lunch with one person, alive or dead, who would it be? If I could have lunch with one person, alive or dead, who would it be? I would have lunch with um, a very, very good friend of mine, Mike, that died when I was in eighth grade. And he was probably one of the most influential people in my life. I don't talk about him, I probably never will, but if I could have lunch with anyone, it would be him. If I could just talk to him one more time, if I could talk to anyone just one time and just one more time, it would definitely be him. Biggest achievement so far, making money from my YouTuber. Making money, not making money, making money from my blog for the first time, making, being able to say that I make money as a blogger, that's like my biggest achievement to me so far. What's your most, I'm sorry, I'm going all out of order, so like if you, if I, I asked one of your questions from forever ago and I repeat one of your questions now, it's because of the way that I did these screenshots, it's kind of like all out of order and out of whack, so I probably won't repeat your channel name, I'll just ask the question, but um, what is your most memorable travel experience when i was younger we used to go every single summer to north carolina and visit my family and one of those summers we stayed in an rv for the whole summer and it was a whole lot of fun i think that was my most memorable experience because there was a lot of good quality family moments that summer that i never had again and never had before then either what do you want to get out of being a black youtuber I have to be a black YouTuber, so I don't really know what the significance was in that. But what I want to get out of being a YouTuber in general is I want to inspire people. The same thing for my blog. I want to inspire people and I want to show them that you don't have to, you know, bend your morals or do anything out of character. You can follow your dreams and start from the bottom, start with nothing and do the things that you want to do. And so I want to be able to document my growth and all that good stuff. The next one, what is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you when you were younger? Okay, um, when 
I was in the third grade, I want to say. Me walking into the boys' bathroom when I was in third grade, and all the boys were looking at me, and the guy that I had the biggest crush on was also in there, and it was super duper embarrassing, and I hated myself, and I wanted to die, so yeah, there's that. That, that happened. So I think that's all the questions. So thank you to everybody who sent me questions. I really appreciate it. These were actually some pretty good questions. Some of them were very thought provoking and some of them brought up some old memories. So I really appreciate that. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you have made it to this point in the video, then leave up the wink emoji in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in, in the next video. Oh my god.